Virginia, please take the TEDx Bay Area stage. Experiences that really give you perspective and depth. And with them, there's these triggers, these triggers that bring you right back there. Obama winning the election really triggered one for me. It brought me back to the fall of 2008. I'm home in Oregon from, on a mini vacation for my full-time job, visiting my father so we can work with the, on the company that we're just starting to form, Silvatex. The goal of the company is to commercialize his renewable fuel technology that he spent the last eight years developing, so it was a pretty big deal. And we had, we received a grant, one of the, a small grant, but it was a big milestone in us for our company. And we were all very excited, but at the same time, we were exhausted, nervous. There's this anxiety that's sort of underlining everything that we're doing. I'm sitting next to my father in the two chairs downstairs in our living room, the same two chairs that we jumped out of when Obama won the election just days ago. And I'm amazed by how calm and content he is. Having gone to the doctor for a cough a few weeks prior and walked out with a diagnosis of terminal stage four pancreatic cancer. We had so little time, time as father and daughter, time as a family, time as business partners, and so much to do. In this moment of utter catastrophe, a sharp contrast to my everyday. It brought the purpose of my life into focus. And I really began to question, what am I creating with my life? How do I want to be remembered? What type of impact do I want to make? It was seven weeks from diagnosis to death. And after he passed away, I was faced with the inconvenient reality that what he had started, what we had started, would go with him to his grave unless I really carried on the mission and kept the technology alive. And in this moment of great loss, I was very inspired by his ideals and really felt a sense of obligation to bring this technology to the world since it had potential for such great impact. This is when it became clear to me that I wanted my story to be one of how this personal loss not only shifted the focus of my life, but also shifted the trajectory of our company from thinking small to thinking big so we could be part of the larger transition towards the age of renewables. This is now I wake up every morning and this is why I'm here today. As entrepreneurs, we disrupt markets. That's what we do, that's what we strive for. Henry Ford did this with the automobile industry. He invented the assembly line, ultimately allowing for mass production and wide scale adoption of the passenger vehicle. It wasn't just his technology of the Ford Model T that allowed for this. It was also his business model. We, uh, a product can only really go so far unless you have both a successful technology and an innovative business model. And he, his business model revolutionized production. So our team really began to question, how do we apply this idea of disruptive innovation to the energy sector when the market already exists? It's huge, it's massive, and it's growing. The ideals of the peace era really influenced the development of our technology and really gave us our vision for, for the future. This is a slide that we used early on last year uh, when presenting our company. And as you can see, we have a strong vision for blue skies, sunflower fields, a, a fueling station strategically placed in the middle of a sunflower field for easy fueling, of course. And although this image is beautiful, it conveys a vision of where we want the world to go and how we want the world to be, as opposed to the world we're living in right now and the world that we are creating. Utopian, really, and very idealistic. We realized we were thinking too small. If we want to make a big impact, we really have to have a global solution for today. We have to have more than one fueling station in the middle of a sunflower field. We have to have global distribution. So just as Henry Ford had to overcome the problems with production, we realized that in the energy sector, we really have to overcome the complications of large scale distribution. It took 100 years and trillions of dollars to build the complex infrastructure that spans the globe today. 
just to get the fuel that we get the pump, that we get the pump every day. They not only need to find where this oil is in the ground, go and pump these massive quantities out of the ground, then transport it using pipelines, ships, ports, lots of infrastructure to then bring it to a refinery where then it's refined into the product that we use on a daily basis and then redistribute it into the world. It's an amazingly complex process. And to recreate that would be incredibly difficult and very costly. Something that new technologies have really tried to do, and they've failed at scaling to really disrupt the market. So this is when we started to think differently. We took a different approach, to a different angle to our business model. Our solution is to work inside the infrastructure, scale within the existing infrastructure so we can really use all the distribution networks and have a global impact instead of one or two pumps all over. And although the beautiful imagery is gorgeous, we realized that we were not only creating a solution for today, for the future, but also creating a solution for today. So we had to get new imagery around our company and we sent it off to a designer and this is what they came back with. Initially, I was shocked. The contrast is amazing. And uh, the sunflower fields turn to concrete highways. You can see the beautiful blue skies turn into polluted air from vehicle emissions and the urban environment in the background. And you know, my idealist part just sort of just got a little sad. Um, but I quickly realized, I quickly shifted and, and realized we were finally thinking bigger. We started to see the world for what it is today. We'd taken off our rose colored glasses and sort of woke up using a first generation technology developed by my father, but a second generation approach to the problem allows us to keep the same ideals, right? But we're able to play in this big market. And as you know, California is one of the most progressive places on the planet when it comes to the environment, right? Uh, we really believe we can create change and we do create change. However, we're not moving fast enough. We're not doing enough. When we get outside of this West Coast bubble that we're in, the effects are much more dramatic. When it comes to the environmental health effects, you can see them, there's endless examples on how our current energy status quo is really affecting us. Uh, growing up in Bangkok, Thailand, I learned this firsthand, the effects of really the air pollution that plagues our developing countries. It's a day in one of the cities in China is equivalent to smoking two packs of cigarettes. There was the largest blackout in history just this last summer that affected more than 9% of the world's population. That is unbelievable for a number of days. We cannot forget one of the largest oil spills that hit our nation just weeks, or sorry, a few years ago, and the, that still continuously plagues us. And one of the largest storms that hit our nation just weeks ago. There are enough examples on how our current energy usage is really affecting us at the local and also global level. And unfortunately, it's taking these events for us all to wake up and see the clear picture of really what's happening, right? We can't keep on moving in this direction. Just like the loss of my father really woke up something within our company, within me, to think big and act with urgency. I would argue that we have enough examples and we've reached this tipping point for a global shift. And we have the tools and technology. And now we really need to focus on and take an initiative on innovative business models to mobilize and take action. So when you look at our energy consumption over time, you can see that we use much, much more energy now than we used to. Over the last 200 years, we've grown by a factor of six in the population, but we use 20 times more energy. Unbelievable, right? And that's not, you know, we're not gonna be stopping. We can also see the primary source of energy has changed from wood to coal and the progression of oil over time. So this really makes you think, you know, where are we at right now? Well, on the graph, you can see we're definitely in the age of oil, not only from the graph, but also looking around us. The next age is going to be the age of renewables. We can get there. We can get there. It takes a world of people to create a paradigm shift, a world of people to be focused on making an impact and be working with urgency. Just as the peace era really did a great job of spreading awareness and empowering a generation of people, the renewable age needs us all to rally to make green energy really a solution and transition into that age. 
The Age of Renewables is here if you want it to be. Let's make it happen. Thank you.